Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from down under. Um, yeah, normally these days uh, I wouldn't bother about these backwards and forwards arguments about things like uh, chemtrails. I'm just a little bit sick of it, but I'm just going to make an exception uh, because I was sent this uh, following clip uh, from Guy McPherson who just can't help himself but opine on uh, chemtrails. In it he gives a uh, clip from Edward Snowden who expresses his uh, scepticism about their existence. Well, it used to be uh, that everyone is allowed their own uh, opinion about things, or at least it used to be that way. Uh, now it's certainly not. If you get eaten up or censored or something uh, if you express the wrong opinion. So here it is uh, once again. Anyway, uh, have a, uh, a quick listen. As he points out, there's no evidence for chemtrails. There never has been any evidence for chemtrails, and I've been writing about that for years now. I'll include a link in the description down below about some of the evidence I've compiled with respect to so-called chemtrails. At the edge of extinction, only love remains. And a whole lot of people chase the misinterpretations of blah, 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 blah nonsense. I get somewhat irritated when people cite authorities instead of evidence. So Guy back in the day, so did Guy back in the day, but now he's, he's actually doing it. He's on the attack. Uh, great strategy for the folk who can't think for themselves or deal with evidence. Now they'll have two authorities that they can deal, uh, they can hang their hats on. Uh, so, Let's just go to this. Uh, I'm going to take a, a minute. Okay, so if we're talking about authorities, Snowden might not be a particularly uh, good choice because he was quoted, uh, I don't know quite when this was, uh, uh, as saying that climate change was a hoax. It was dreamed up by the CIA. And that came across, uh, you know, and of course these are climate, climate deniers. Uh, and it doesn't quite sound like Ed to me. Uh, what he has said, something like that. I don't know, I doubt it. The report might be a bit suspicious, uh, but then again, it might not. So all I'm doing uh, is I'm just trying to bring up the the whole preposterous thing of just kind of pinning authorities to uh, persuade people of something that you want them to believe instead of the actual evidence. Hey, guy. Anyway, uh, that wasn't quite what I wanted to say. So now let's just have a look at some of the non-evidence and how the folk that want to use their authority to tell us it's all a load of nonsense, uh, might respond or they might not. Uh, usually because they just ignore any evidence, except their own. To people, if they're anything like me, come to all of this uh, because of what they see in the sky or what they experience for themselves, and then they go looking for explanations. Uh, and the first thing is visual thing. Uh, people respond to what they see in the sky. They respond to this. And there are lots of trails. Let's just call them by the, uh, the uh, conventional term contrail, shall we? Uh, yeah, ones like this or uh, like this. Uh, but it's all just uh, water vapour, isn't it? Nothing more. Um, people say that if it, all this was as a result of geoengineering, 
wouldn't we see the planes? Uh, I would like to turn the question around and ask if there are so many contrails produced by aviation, which itself is a huge uh, problem and causation of, of uh, warming, um, but something that uh, goes completely unacknowledged by Guy McPherson and others, and I just wonder whether it's partially because he just loves flying, he flies all over the place. Um, and yeah, and then there's this, uh, and this is kind of seeing this from above and seeing it also from below has gone quite a long way to make me ask uh, questions. Uh, so then there's the turning on and off of nozzles um, by the planes, as in this uh, following uh, video. Pretty weak in itself, I will admit. Uh, but let's go to another bit of uh, uh, non-evidence, uh, shall we? Well, here is a video of two jets uh, uh, with trails behind them. Um, and uh, quite apart from that, they seem to be, look quite different from normal contrails and the way in which they behave. Uh, it also clearly shows the jets able to turn the condensation trails on and off. And I don't think that that happens with uh, classical uh, contrails. Oh, but no, they're just contrails. Uh, chemtrails don't exist. Oh, but here's the evidence. Uh, no, the evidence doesn't matter. Uh, chemtrails don't exist. Tests that people have got done showing highly elevated aluminium in the water that's come down in the rain. Uh, folks, including myself, are very worried about this because uh, health is already compromised. So here we are. Uh, I'll put a, 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 a link to this. So, oh, wow, that's uh, yeah, that's a little bit. Uh, some of it may be of uh, varying value, but uh, anyway, that's all just aluminium coming from China. Well, no, uh, people in New Zealand in the southern hemisphere have also had tests done which show the same results, uh, levels of aluminium uh, through the roof. And unless you're living next to an aluminium smelter, uh, or, or, or use aluminium in your pots, pots, you wouldn't expect that. Uh, oh, no, oh no, that can't be. Um, because chemtrails don't exist. Here's another um, uh, bit of uh, non-evidence. Uh, there's the small matter of a large -ish number of patents that have been taken out for geoengineering uh, uh, techniques. So let's just have a look. Go back to 1891. So some of this is weather control. That's uh, a fair sort of uh, list for me for uh, weather control and uh, geoengineering.
Wow, oh, and so they go on. Okay, so there we are. Ah, uh, but not all patents are used by inventors, they often go unused. Uh, all, all of them? All of the above? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I believe in infinite coincidence. Chemtrails don't exist, so I can say whatever I damn well like. And so, uh, what is it? Sam Karana, for instance, he can mention geoengineering in every one of his articles. And yet I don't take umbrage at that, because uh, he's coming up with useful information all the time. Um, he's adding to our our um, our knowledge base. Um, I've known Guy for several years now, uh, since 2012. He's done some great research, and he's been pretty much uh, vindicated. Uh, and I'll always have gratitude uh, uh, for that. He also complains loudly about having been betrayed and how he likes evidence and how evidence is being ignored by all these trolls and people. Um, everything he says. Uh, when have you heard any of his detractors uh, take him on on the basis of evidence instead of just uh, personal attack. Uh, I haven't seen it. And I've been with him on that. But you have to be consistent. Guy McPherson is treating people uh, with ideas he doesn't like in exactly the same way uh, as his detractors, the Michael Manns, the whoever, uh, with the greatest disdain and disrespect. And I do not respect that. In fact, I find it obnoxious. You want to treat people, you want people to treat you with respect. In fact, actually, that's what he demands all the time. While you treat other people abominably. Well, how's that? I'm not unfair, and I can see how the behaviour of the yes but chemtrailers um, who are really denying anthropogenic change would irritate Guy, and of course for a long time uh, it did me. But you can't judge a theory by people like this, by the people who agree or disagree and why and everything. Uh, as he says so often, um, it's the evidence. So what people like me are trying to get across is that anthropogenic CO2 induced climate change is not the only show in town. Things are perhaps a lot more um, complicated. Um, but indeed this geoengineering is going on in an attempt to mask the very real heating and the ecological collapse of the planet. Now if I was to say, and I don't often do this, what should be, is that there uh, should be fundamental agreement between Guy McPherson and Dane Wigington. Um, when I listen to um, uh, Dane's Sunday show, and all the headlines he brings, he's uh, he's doing an excellent uh, job, and I wouldn't have thought that they had much to disagree on. But they could, of course, have a an agreement to disagree on uh, geoengineering, and this is not going to happen because the fault is entirely on one side. One side is acting very, very badly. And Guy has stopped talking about the specific specific reality some time ago and talks in generalities. We're all going to die, he says, but don't talk to me about crop failures 
and the melting of the Arctic ice. And I think back to his uh, interview he did with um, uh, New Zealand Television where he had all the chance in the world uh, to be specific and to tell people some fairly basic facts, but he passed that up to just deal in generalities. And I tried engaging with him when he was here uh, on these issues a few months ago. And to say that he treated this with my questions uh, about the references to the Arctic uh, with great disinterest would be a gross understatement. In fact, he told my partner Pam, if I had a question about climate change, I could send him an email. So that's what uh, eight years of, of friendship and support well, that's where it goes. So back in 2012, he sent me a copy of an e-book, Walking Away from Empire. My fear, which until now I've kept to myself, is that Guy, having moved from the richest county in the country and now to Palm Beach, Florida, isn't that where um, where um, Epstein had his his mansion? I might be wrong about that. In Florida. Uh, there's not much to dissuade me that he just can't walk back in to Empire. In fact, sometimes I ask myself, with all the rapid warming, all the fires in Australia, the melting in the Arctic, the terrible and worsening headlines every day, does it really matter whether this has been caused by airplanes spewing out chemical laden contrails or because of our industrial activity. Things are as they are, unless you're um, kind of one of the, the liberals who are fighting for a, a fourth industrial um, revolution and uh, pretending to be about climate change. Um, so things are as they are and I think it is a trifle late to do anything to avoid our fate unless there are factors that are invisible to us as humans. And I don't disregard that. And I've never said that I'm right. I've never said that anybody is right. I've never said that Guy McPherson is right. There's always the possibility that we're all wrong. All I can say is that the bulk of the evidence points in that direction. So I think what we need to be doing now is getting our spiritual houses in order and that does not mean a trite reference to on the edge of extinction only love remains. Anyway, from where I'm sitting, I don't see any signs of that. Do you?